All right, communication. Communication is really important, especially when we're remote. That means you have to pay attention and especially stay on top of your email. So this is where I really stress the importance of checking your GCC email account. Your email account is how the college officially communicates with you. Anything you need to know is in that account, um, unless it's class specific, in which case it'll be in Moodle. But it might also be in your email account. Um, so that's how the college is going to communi communicate with you. That is how your instructors are going to communicate with you. Um, so like if class is canceled, you're going to find that out via email, that sort of thing. Um, so you really want to check it and you really want to check it every day because you're going to get a bunch of email and you don't want it to get overwhelming. Um, I am very aware of uh, people's general approach to email, which is to ignore as much as possible. And I'm just stressing that this is not one of those situations, okay? So one of the things I really want you to take away from this evening is checking your email, do it every day. Um, so I'm sure you figured this out already, but I'm going over it anyway. So the way you can access your email, but also my GCC and Moodle is through this login button on the main GCC page. Also, if you are need to find some looking for something, you know, at GCC, do not be afraid of the search bar. Um, you know, I use that to find things all the time, and I know other staff and students do too. Uh, when you click on that login button, then this drop down menu comes up. The first thing you can access is my GCC. We're going to talk more about that later. You can also access Moodle. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later, and your student email account. You can also access the student help desk there. Um, so if you're having uh, like you need help resetting your password or whatever, you're having other tech issues, you can use that. When you click on that email link there, what's nice is when it pulls up the Gmail login, it fills in this at stuemail.gcc.mass.edu so that you don't have to type it. I will say, I will point out that if it's not obvious, before you try to sign into your student email, if you have a personal Gmail account, you need to sign out of that. I've definitely had students say like, I can't get to my student email. I was like, have you logged out of your personal one? And they're like, oh, so just a helpful tip. Um, and then of course you can always just add that. All right, speaking of email, you every Monday morning you will get an email that is the weekly news and updates for students email and it please read it I know it's Monday morning I know you're a little groggy this is going to be a fabulous source for you for knowing about things that are events that are happening um, and announcements you know deadlines you know information from the finance about financial aid information from the bookstore like definitely read this email. I read it because so that I know what's going on and what to tell my students about. So I make sure you read that. That's your PSA. Uh, we are on social media. Um, we have a general GCC Facebook page. Student Activities has a Facebook page. Um, the library also does. Um, and there is um, there. I don't know if it's still active, but there is um uh, like a GCC squad Facebook page that was created by some GCC students um, last spring when we all went remote. So um, check that out as well. You can also find us on Twitter and we are on the Instagram. All right, technology. We're going to spend a bit of time on technology because that's how we're doing everything these days. Um, so first, my GCC. You, I'm get you. I'm guessing you're a little bit familiar with my GCC because that's how you registered for orientation. It's probably um, you know it's how you access your schedule, um, and there's probably other things you've already been doing in my GCC. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you log into GCC, it looks like this. Over here on the left hand side. Sorry. A little water went down the wrong way. On the left hand side, you can see my announcements. That's how you registered for orientation. Uh, you will see this link to update your alert GCC information. Definitely make sure you make definitely make sure that the information there, so your personal email, your uh, phone number is up to date. I will warn you, 
this alert never goes away. You'll always see this button. Um, and there will be other announcements here as well. One of the other buttons you'll see right now is um, instructions for how to upload a picture so that you can get a GCC ID. Over here in the middle, you can find some GCC announcements and events, but that's not like everything. That's why you want to read that email on Mondays. And then over here, you can see an academic calendar. Obviously, this is from the summer um, of the dates that are coming up soonest. Um, here, where it says my account, if you click on that, um, you can act. You can make. You can update your personal information, so your alert information. But also, if you have a preferred name that you would like people to use, uh, or some of us just call it your name, you can make sure it's correct there. Um, over here on the left hand side, you have some links to things like your schedule and finding your advisor, uh, registering yourself. Here where it says submit a form, if you click on this, you'll get a drop down menu that will give you some options. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. Over here on the right hand side where a picture review will be if you have an ID, if you don't have an ID, this button still works. It just says no photo. If you click on your dashboard, it looks like this and it will bring up a quick a version, it bring up your schedule. Um, you can also uh, get your, see who your advisor is and email them directly from this, or at the very least get their email address. You can see a more detailed version of your schedule. If you need a copy of your unofficial transcript, you get that right here. If you ever forget where your ID is because you don't use it that regularly, you can find it here by clicking on this button that says show student ID. Um, and then you can also see uh, financial aid information. If you have any holds that might be preventing you from registering for classes, and you can always see your testing results from your AccuPlacer test if you want to check that out for some reason. Um, and so that I feel is all the information I wanted to tell you about the dashboard on my GCC. Now we're going to talk about Moodle. All right. Moodle is the online learning management system. Moodle is obviously how you got here this evening, but it's also where you will access your classes. All right. So Moodle is very, very important. Uh, when you log when you log into Moodle, it looks something like this. Um, in the center where you'll find your classes, you can you know, set up set these up in different ways. This is card view. I think you can do a list view. Um, and uh, you can star the one, star some of these if you want those to be at the top, that sort of thing. You can also find your classes here. That's where we found the new student orientation link. Um, you can find some of your classes over here. How these show up is a mystery to me. Uh, I don't know if Gary can explain it better, um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so this is what it looks like when you log into Moodle. This is your dashboard. So you can always get back to here by clicking on this dashboard link on the left-hand side. When you open up a specific class, it's gonna look something like this. In the center is where you're gonna find all the course information. Um, so one quick note, your class, not, all your not all of your classes may be showing up yet. Your instructors might not have made theirs visible. For example, my two classes aren't visible yet. Don't tell Gary, um, but uh, you want to spend time familiarizing yourself with each Moodle site for your classes because instructors set them up differently. So some some instructors set them up so it's week by week. So everything you need in the first week is here. Everything you need in the second week is here. Other folks will set it up more thematically. So I used to have my site set up thematically. So homework was all in one place. Handouts were all in one place. Readings were all in one place. Um, but then when we went remote, I found the weekly version to be more helpful. So that's mostly how I have mine set up. Um, just note, you can also get to resource, quick access to resources here on the right-hand side. Um, so uh, yes, so that's like a quick thing um, about when you're in a class. All right. Now, so now we're gonna talk about, um, uh, sorry, my brain deceased, easily distracted. All right, this is another one of the things that if you remember nothing else from this evening, I really need you to remember these things. If you, when you go into uh, Moodle at the top here, see the, see the golden arrow is pointing to this GCC links. This is really important. If you click on that, you'll get these options. These two, the remote and online learning for students and the new Moodle users classroom you need to look at 
before classes start. They would they will provide you with a host of all sorts of helpful information. All right, so before classes start, you're checking these out. All right, we're gonna take a little quick glance at the remote and online learning for students. When you, get, when you get into it, there's some general information at the top and then there are these different topics. I have them all collapsed. If you click on an arrow, it um, opens them up. So you can get like, just kind of like, what is distance learning? That's what we're all doing. Information about video conferencing. So not just Zoom, but also Google Meet and other like YouTube Live and other things. Using Moodle, this one's super, super important. If you have a Chromebook, you wanna find out how that interacts with Moodle. And then we have this section also that are general skills for online learning. So especially if this is your first time taking an online class, you wanna check that out. But also, um, I think that you, like even if you've been doing online learning for a little while, maybe just because of the pandemic, um, it's always helpful to like find out, find new tricks, so to speak. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. If you check nothing out, else out, please, for the love of whatever you hold dear, do the go through the using Moodle section. First, there is this very helpful tutorial. And for those of us who need who are visual and need people to show us how things work to learn it, this is a, it's like seven or eight whole minutes. It's done by Gary. Um, and uh, it walks you through a bunch of things. And so you want to watch that. Like I said, it's only like seven to eight minutes. And then after that, below the video, you will find, so this tells you what happens, what's gone over in the tutorial. This gives you an opportunity to practice posting to a Moodle site. So if you have to, you know, post to a discussion forum, this gives you an opportunity to give it a whirl. This gives you an opportunity to practice submitting an assignment. You're going to need to submit assignments for your uh, classes. This will walk you through how to do it. And there's also a practice quiz. So if you have to take a quiz for, for a class, this walks you through how, do, how to do the quiz. Um, and there's additional information here. So at the very least, make sure you do this section of the remote and online learning for students. Now we're gonna talk about the boatload of stuff that is in the Moodle users classroom. So when you're, so this just has a lot, this has more detailed stuff. Um, so I just like, it has more information about navigating and customizing Moodle, uh, help, you know, how to create PDF files. If you need to post to a forum, you're gonna do that through this text editor. Um, how, how assignments, quizzes, and grades for students. Um, information on G Suite. You'll notice that there's some overlap between this and the remote and online learning course. We're not done yet. <laughs> there's also information about Google Meet and Live to Live YouTube YouTube Live. Man, that all went more wacky. And um, using Zoom. So there's a bunch of information uh, in this as well. And so. Definitely remember you have those as a reference at any point. Um, so, like I said, before classes start, check out the remote and online learning course, and then also take a gander at the Moodle users classroom, okay? Because we want you to be able to feel prepared for your first day of classes and not stressed out about like, I don't know how to post to a forum. Don't worry, we got you covered. All right. Moving on. Amethyst, can I jump in for just one second? Yes, Gary, you absolutely may. And can I just encourage folks to use that Moodle Uses Classroom as you're working through the semester also? And if, yes. if there's a question or something, you know, just know that that's always there. And if you forgot how to, you know, submit a to a form or something, you can always go back and look there. And also, if there's there's things that you're not sure about, reach out to your instructor or reach out to me and I'll be glad to add tutorials and whatnot and put them up there for everybody to have. So Great. that's it. Great. Thank you, Gary. Uh, 